top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day, that's Wabu, that's Wabu, that's Wabu, sister. All right, y'all. It is March. Hey, girl. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, girl. Hey. We are already in March, and you know what I noticed this morning? Well, you know, if you're paying attention, that the sun has changed its gait, meaning we're getting into the springtime. All right, y'all. So normally, I know y'all can't see it, but you're going to start seeing the sun shine more and more, like, in my screen. But Twilu, sister, because the sun now... um. For the last few months, it's been rising over the tennis court between these particular trees. You know, we know the moon changes its course like every um, every couple of months, right? Um, but the sun changes its gait a little less. And it's now rising probably, let's say if it was rising at 9 o'clock, it's now rising at 12 o'clock. I'm not saying that those are exact coordinates because it's probably not. But I'm just saying when it's rising, now it's no longer rising over those two trees over the tennis court over my house. It's further over towards this one, now more towards the school. And plus, the trees are blooming. We see worms out there. So if we didn't have like a calendar that we could look at, you know, we could tell if we pay attention to nature. I just, you know, I love nature, y'all. So, but if you haven't noticed, you know, that's how you can tell, if, you know. So the sun is definitely rising at a different gait. So. If you see the sun shining in, you know, that's why. Because before, you know, this during the winter when I had this open, you know, you couldn't, it was light, but the sun wasn't shining in. Um, but the other day, was it Friday? I noticed when we were doing it that the sun was starting to come in. I'm like, hmm, but I didn't check on it till this morning. And I realized, oh, the sun has entered into a different gate. So, with that being said, y'all, okay, I'm done running my mouth about nature and stuff. But anyway, y'all, it's Sunday. March the 1st, 2020, day 85, and today we are reading 1 Samuel 19, 20, and 21. All right, y'all. Let me get to it. That's not that long today. All right, y'all. 1 Samuel chapter 19. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David, and Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill me. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand by my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been toward thee very good. For he did thus put his life in his hand, and slew the Philistine, and Yahuwah wrought a great salvation for all of Israel. Thou sawest it, and thou didst rejoice. Wherefore then, without sin against this innocent blood, to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, As Yahuwah liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in time past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from Yahuwah was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou not save thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through the window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair with his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed and a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michael, Why hast thou deceived me so and sent away my enemy that he has escaped? And Michael answered Saul, and he said unto me, Let me go, 
why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped and came unto Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David, and they went and saw the company of prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, as the spirit of Yahuwah was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then he went to Ramah and came to a great well that is in Sikhu, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they are in Naoth and Ramah. And he went thither to Naoth and Ramah, and the spirit of Yahuwah was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and night. Wherefore, they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? First Samuel chapter 20. And David fled from Naoth and Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, what have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, God forbid that thou shalt die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but he will show it to me, but that he will show it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as Yahuwah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then Jonathan said unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desire, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I shall not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at evening. Is If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked to leave with me, that he might return to Bethlehem his city. For there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. And if he say thus, it is well, thy servant hath found peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of Yahuwah with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be any iniquity in me, slay me thyself, or why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it to thee? Then said Jonathan to David, Who shall tell me, or what if thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have surrounded, when I have, when I have sounded, my father about the morrow any time or on the third day and behold if there be any good toward david and i then send not unto thee and show it to thee you who will do so much do so and much more to jonathan but if it please my father to do thee evil then i will show it thee and send thee away that thou mayest go in peace and you who will be with thee as he hath been with my father and thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of Yahuwah that I die not, but also that thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not even, not when Yahuwah hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let Yahuwah even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. And Jonathan said unto David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, and thou shalt go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shall remain by the stone ezel. And I will shoot three arrows on one side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send the lad, saying, Go, find the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come thou, for there is peace with thee, and no hurt as Yahuwah liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, for Yahuwah has sent thee away. And as touching the matter which thou hast spoken of, behold, 
you who would be between thee and me forever. So David hid himself in the field when the new moon was come. The king sat down to eat meat, and the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon the seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something hath befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of David, the son of Jesse, to eat meat, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked to leave with me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family have sacrificed in the city. And my brother, he hath commanded me to be there. And now if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me go away, I pray thee, and see my brother. And therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. And Saul anger, and then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. And he said unto him, Thou son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered, saw his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at a time appointed with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried over the lad, making speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. And the lad knew not anything, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of the place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept with one another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn, both of us, in the name of Yahuwah, saying, Yahuwah be between me and thee and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Last chapter for the day, y'all. Um, First Samuel chapter 21. Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David. And he said unto them, unto him, Where art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business, whereby I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth I have been kept from of a truth, the women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessel of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner, is in a manner common, yea, the word were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him the hollow bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread that was taken from before Yahuwah to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the service of Saul was there that day detained before you who and his name was Doeg and Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen among the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand a spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, Go to Goliath, the Philistine whom thou slewest in the valley of Eli, behold, there it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod if thou would take that take it for there is no other save that here and david said there is none like that give it to me and david arose and fled that day for the fear of saul and went to achish 
the king of Gath, and the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of him and dance, and saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was so afraid of Achish the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. And Achish said unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? How I need have I need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? That was funny. David acted like he was slow. He he was scared. He thought the king was gonna kill him. So he played like he was he played like he had a um, I was gonna say a word when I'm like, you know, that might not be politically correct, you know. He so he act like he had mental issues. I was about to say he was acting like he was retarded, you know, but that's that mm, you know. But anyway, but that was funny. All right, y'all. That was the reading for today. First Samuel 19, 20 and 21. It is Sunday, March the first, 2020, and it's day 85. If you missed the reading, go on head back and Reread it, 19, 20, and 21. If you don't want to read it with your own eyes, you can around the video after I post it and listen to me talk if you want to. Hey, either way, just read it. But if you already read it, you can read on. You can go back and read what you miss, whatever. Hey, do what you want to do. All right, y'all. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and give a blessing. May you who will bless us and keep us. May you who will make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May you who will lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace, his shalom, his salama. All that concerns us, he is concerned about y'all. So with that being said, I love y'all. And I will see you bright and early in the morning. Peace.